A supermarket has today apologised after a toddler was ordered to remove his hood while out shopping with his mum. Two-year-old Corey Reed from Norwich had his hood up because he suffers from earache. His mother was shocked when a member of staff at their local co-op store told him to take it off for fear of breaching security. Malcolm Robertson reports. There are youths who wear hoods who can be a bit intimidating, perhaps best to give them a wide berth. And then there's Corey Reed, two years old and, well, he's hardly going to be scaring too many grannies, is he? He's far too busy enjoying DVDs. At the weekend, he was out and about on a shopping trip to the local co-op store at West Earlham in Norwich. He's prone to air infections and he get a lot of air aches and so on the particular day it was cold and windy so his mum made sure he had this hood up. He had no idea of the problems he was about to cause. On Sunday, Corey came here with his mum for some shopping and she was amazed when a member of staff asked her to remove his hood. For security reasons, all of which came as a surprise to the rest of the family given that Corey could hardly be viewed as a potential troublemaker. Shocked at the time, but she had other things on her mind, so and she didn't want any confrontation or aggro, so she left and then she came home and told me or phoned me up, and I was actually well shocked, amazed. I didn't even believe her. I thought he's two years old, he's, he's petite. Why would they? The East of England Cooperative Society says it has a policy of asking customers to remove hoods or helmets, but that it advocates staff taking a common sense approach. It admits getting it wrong here. Clearly, we've made a mistake on this occasion and we apologise to the Reed family for the upset caused. Our store manager would be happy to talk to them personally if they come into the store. Today they did go into the store and common sense prevailed. Corey got some sweets and kept his hood on. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Norwich. Housing and maintenance contracts in Norwich, previously provided by Connaught, are to be put out to tender to ensure the City Council doesn't face a legal challenge. It could take up to a year for the council to sign a contract with a new firm. In the meantime, services will be provided by emergency contractors. The unions say they're worried the plans will waste time and that there's now no speedy resolution in sight for workers concerned about their long-term futures. Police in Ipswich have admitted they're concerned about possible violence when Ipswich face Leeds at Portman Road on Saturday. In 2007, players were forced to flee to the dressing room after Leeds supporters invaded the Elland Road pitch when their side were relegated. It's the first time the sides have met since then, with police saying they will not tolerate any trouble. Laura Burns has more on that. This is what happened the last time Ipswich met Leeds in the Championship. With less than a minute left, hundreds of Leeds fans spilled onto the pitch. This footage from a Blues fan's camera shows stewards moving the troublemakers away from the Ipswich supporters' stand. They were fighting themselves as well on the pitch, which was the most bizarrest uh, situation, but it was a horrible day and a, a horrible feeling. It's only when there are the few idiots that tend to take it too far, and I would hope that that won't be the case this time. His sentiment is echoed by Suffolk Police. If your interest in the game is a genuine one and you're coming down to support your team and watch a football match, then you're very welcome. But for those that want to engage in antisocial behaviour or disorder, then our tactics will certainly be designed to disrupt that and prevent that from interfering with the majority of supporters who are coming to this game to enjoy it and to watch a good game of football. 140 officers will operate what they call firm but fair policing. This includes serving a notice on anyone they feel may cause alcohol-related violence. Well, no one from the club would speak on camera, but a spokesperson did tell me that they're not planning to do anything differently this weekend. Rather, they'll be treating Saturday's game as they would any other. Kick-off is at 3 o'clock, and large crowds and heavy traffic are expected. While these can't be prevented, it's hoped any other disruption will be. Laura Burns, Anglia News, Ipswich. People living in Sheringham on the North Norfolk coast are voting today in a parish poll designed to gauge public support for two rival supermarket plans. It's the latest round in a 13-year battle by Tesco to build a supermarket in the town. In March, councillors approved a rival plan by Waitrose for a store in Weybourne Road against the advice of their officers. Tesco have now submitted new plans. A scheme which will see volunteer pilots taking to the skies to help emergency services with major incidents has been launched in Essex today. Fire Minister Bob Neill was at Essex Fire's headquarters in Kelverdon to officially launch Air Search. A total of 60 pilots have made themselves available so they can give emergency crews the bigger picture from the air. Well, last week they gave a bird's eye view of the oil spill in Southend and also on Canby Island. 
In sport, two swimmers from the region will compete for England in the Commonwealth Games. Chris Walker-Heaven from Bury St Edmunds and Anne Bockman from Norwich. The pair have been making final preparations for the Games with the Great Britain squad at their training base in Qatar before heading to Delhi in India. The swimming events start on Monday. The issues regarding Delhi, I mean, we've just sort of um, kept our heads about ourselves and just sort of tried not to let it you know, bother us too much and just get our head down and get on with it. And uh, I'm sure by the time we get there, everything will be fine. So just sort of got to get on with it, really. Now, Essex and Hertfordshire have two of the worst roads for traffic jams in the entire country. A new survey says the A414 at Harlow in Essex and the A5183 Hollywell Hill in Hertfordshire both suffer congestion for at least 84 hours a week. Well, next, how Luton Airport is recruiting plane spotters as extra anti-terrorist security outside of its perimeter fence. 550 members of the Aviation Enthusiasts Group...